This is Big Earn. We rented a Jeep. Going for a Jeep ride. Second Airborne uh, area, and then from there, uh, the second part we go to uh, to Huta Beach. No, I have two that are wartime wheelies. Other ones, CJ two A. Uh, but I put I live in Los Angeles, so they drive fast. So yeah. I have to put V six with uh, eleven inch um, brakes in them. Yeah. So just just just, <laughs> just keep them as authentic as possible. Yeah. If I see one like that, I would never touch it. But I always get them junk. You know, rust. I have to weld the. Okay, flathead. L134. It's beautiful. Six volt. Six volt. Oh, okay. Beautiful. It's all original, huh? All original. Oh, we wow. all restored it. Wow. And it's a bit dirty now. See, we got the felt. Yeah. Bonjour. Morning. That's amazing. Morning. <laughs> Love it. Hi. Good morning. Right. Yeah. We only. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we only. Don't hit. Yeah. Well, I uh, I uh, I changed my tires uh, two days ago. Oh, is that so right? I got, I got new. Um, how do you call uh -huh. these things in your language? Uh, NDTs, uh, non-directional tires. No, no, no. Do you know how do you call it? The hub or the rims? No, the um, where you put the tires around. Oh, the the tube, the no. tube, the rims. This no. is the wheel. The wheel. The wheel. Yeah, and the uh -huh. tires. Uh -huh. Wheel and tires. Oh, okay. So. Uh, very nice. Well, I put some uh, extra materials in in here. Uh huh. Just when I uh, when I'll, uh, I'll I'll have some problems. Yeah. Some ignition things or whatever. I'm, I'm not going to bother you with that. <laughs> Three speed. Uh, Three speed yeah. One uh, for going backwards. T18. Yeah. Yeah. Can we take a photo? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's all you know. <laughs> That's all you know. And then he di he didn't he didn't die. No, nope. on that steeple, and that's the wrong steeple. He's on the other side. Exactly. Yeah. And he wasn't alone. He wasn't alone. Yeah. So two other guys. No need for me to tell. The other guys got killed. things out. Very 
troopers uh, were dropped in at pitch darkness. Well, there was moonlight, that was all, but pretty hard to discover references to find out where you were. If you got dropped in one of the fields behind these uh, hedgerows, the roof down because uh, I, I hate these things yeah yeah and then uh, we were waiting at 10 o'clock for the for our uh, Canadian uh, guests uh -huh. and then it started to rain uh, cats and dogs well you were in the museum probably yeah right? yeah, yeah it's not fun but this is Normandy yeah first thing they told me about Normandy when I, when I came here about 30 years ago that was uh, oh Normandy it has four seasons in a day <laughs> that's Normandy a better description doesn't exist. <laughs> and stuff yeah it's, it's a lot of fun well frankly you're doing you're doing the same things as, as we do here uh -huh. the only difference is that that we do it for fun as well with an historical background yeah and you are just looking for um, all kinds of uh, challenges yeah <laughs> which is good uh -huh.
Holland and Norman? Yeah, but at first when I saw them, these were just random pictures of, of veterans. Uh -huh. But then I uh, I started to study them correctly, and if you if you see correctly that it is up there, it's your it's your flag uh -huh. because this is American territory. Yeah. Then it has never forget, ne jamais oublier. That's French for never forget. Uh -huh. World with your heroes. That's every picture bears the same uh, the same text. Then you got the picture. Then you got the name of the man. And then you got the outfit. Uh -huh. So he was with the 101st U.S. Airborne. If we go to the next one, hoorah! <laughs> if we go to the next one, oh, this was the 82nd. Yes, mm -hmm. and this was supposed to be Hanna the First Area. Mm -hmm. So this is a proof of that this, this dropping was chaos up in the air. Uh -huh. They were scattered all over. So you got 101st, you got 82nd, so this 82nd was a misdrop. Paratroopers were dropped and about 6,782nd uh, paratroopers, so 13,000 in, in total. And they all had three different drop zones, so about 2,000 man paratroopers per drop zone, as you could see on my map. But then, uh, for 13,000 uh, paratroopers, with about um, 18 to 20 paratroopers per stick per, per plane, you needed to have about 650, say, 700 uh, airplanes, but in reality they had about 850. If you have 850 airplanes, you're in need for 850 qualified pilots. And your Air Force didn't have that amount of pilots back then. That was only a three-week course. And if you could get up, fly for a bit, go down again, and you did it without any damage, then you were a qualif qualified uh, <laughs> pilot. You signed right up. Uh. <laughs> so the night of nights, this Armada came in. Um, as, as, as closer they got to Normandy, anti-aircraft got, uh, got shut up in, in, in got shoot, shooting up in the air. And then you saw your, um, your, your, your friends uh, getting hit, uh, taken down. And you were supposed to fly in at about 12,000 feet, but then for uh, to, to, to drop your paratroopers, uh, you had to go, uh, you had to fly lower. So um, in the end, they decided to fly about 400 feet, mm -hmm. which was pretty close to this anti-aircraft, but you could speed up a bit more and, and quit the area as fast as possible. But if you um, are trained to drop with a speed of 100 miles per hour, you step out of a plane, then you know that your buddy will be in a vicinity of about 50 meters around you because a stick drops every second. It goes very quickly, you go duck, 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 and then you can, you know, you can find your buddies in the vicinity. But if you, um, if you, uh, if you be in a, if you are, if you were in a plane with uh, these in, in, inexperienced pilots who got afraid as well. So they wanted to leave as quickly as possible. So they speeded up the, um, the, the average speed of the plane, not 100 miles, but about 150 miles. Mm -hmm. If you step out of a plane with 150 miles, it's dangerous as well, because uh, as soon as your chute opens, then uh, you'll be blown into the air with a huge shock and you can lose your conscience. But if you, um, if you uh, manage to go to the ground, your buddy is not in the vicinity of 50 meters, it's way spread because the the speed was uh, was way faster. Mm.
Oh, oh I see. So, where's the reload plan? The moment that Dick Winters and the man he assembled around him got back at his uh, managed to reach their first HQ, they were waiting for Lieutenant Thomas Meehan, the company commander. And no one had news about Thomas Meehan. He was in the leading plane as company commander. And, um, well, they were in time. And the only thing was that no one knew where they had dropped, uh, where, where, the, where the plane landed, just in case of an emergency landing. No news at all. And then all of a sudden, there came reports in of one of the mobile German batteries of this second defense line behind Utah Beach. And um, these guns, these guns at Breakcore Manor, they were uh, a threat to uh, the man to be landed at 6.30. So this battery had to be taken out of action because Meehan didn't report himself in. That was the moment that uh, Richard Winters became company commander of Easy Company. I'm gonna show you the location where Meehan's plane crashed because sadly enough uh, there was no news about me in because he got uh, shot in the tail his plane got shot in the tail and uh, his pilot had to make an emergency landing and that emergency landing ended up uh, fat fatalistic is that is fatal, that? Yeah. fatal. Uh -huh. fatal. And this is the location where uh, the monument has been put up for this plane with Thomas Meehan and uh -huh. uh, the rest of his stick, including uh, the crew. And uh, what you can see is, uh, well, just have a guess what the, f the form, the, 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 the oh, artist... Oh, the tail, huh? That's right. Wow. It's in the tail form. You may get out if you okay. want. Okay. story about the crashes. He uh, crashed two fields behind um, behind the, this, this, uh, this location. Uh -huh. And uh, his... Um, Flying officer first lieutenant Capoluto managed to, uh, to 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 put in this uh, emergency landing, so the C-47 started to slide, and uh, then what what eyewitnesses has has told is that they were used to uh, to to airplanes flying over this particular area because uh -huh. they were bombing Germany that night. Yeah, there was lots of aircrafts up in the air, uh, but then all of a sudden, all of a sudden they got. Uh, shocked by an enormous explosion uh -huh. and that was when this plane was sliding in the field uh, his right wing hit a hedgerow uh -huh. and with the speed the plane still had that was uh, that caused an enormous explosion why this ex enormous explosion i don't know because a plane back then it had petrol oil perhaps some ammunition yeah everybody's probably fully combat loaded with all kinds of weapons yeah. of the plane has been burned, uh, has been burning for practically three days, uh -huh. and at the end, nothing more than just a scrap of metal. Oh wow! Uh, some dog tags, yeah, and part of a part of a wristwatch um, with a time twelve past one midnight. Oh wow! So that was the plane. Uh, that was the time when this all happened. So uh -huh. they were perfectly well on time. Yeah, yeah. But the fire has been so intense, so it was not possible to to enter the plane. And if there have been some paratroopers who managed to get out the plane before it crashed, they would have been found here 
or even survive the war, yeah. right? Yeah. But if you see that about all these men, still six uh, men are missing officially, that implements that even no dog tags were found. That's how hot it was, possibly. Officially, you're yeah. missing in action. If 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 no they dog can't tags, find nothing, yeah. No, no, you, you, no, no identifications, nothing. Wow, that's horrible. So <laughs> that that happened here. And this place uh, bears the names of the stick. Mm -hmm. They were 17, and there was a crew of five. And because this was a leading plane, there was a radio operator in it as well mm -hmm. to pick up the signs put up prior to the landing, to the drop by the by the pathfinders. Mm -hmm. That's him to you, to Sir Meehan? Yeah. So he was the only officer, some uh, NCOs, mm -hmm. private's first class. Amazing. So this is uh, the moment when Dick Winters had to, had to take command over... Uh, uh -huh. the pictures. Mm -hmm. At first I thought they were random, but then uh, I started uh, to study them and then I thought, well, this association who put them up did a really good job because yeah. this little yeah. village, look at this guy. Yeah. Yeah. We were just talking about right there. Yes, because he ended up in this village. Uh-huh, forever. Forever. Wow. Right? And the next one, is his uh, flight officer, the one, uh, the pilot, pilot. Who, uh, who managed to yeah. get the plane down in an emergency landing. Uh -huh. But uh, he as well, he didn't survive. The location where uh, the plane has been burning for three days is that even now, 80 years after this uh, crash, uh, the farmer who exploits his uh, land, every couple of years he does wheat, then he does corn, but still nothing grows there. Really, huh? Nothing grows, which is strange because after a fire, a couple of years later, yeah. the ground turns in more fertile than it was before, uh -huh. but not at this place. There is some vegetation, yeah. but no corn, no wheat, no nothing. Wow. That's incredible. <laughs>
town's that? Fuck the Ville. <laughs> All right. It's like fuck fuckerville. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the French guy, it is Foucarville. Okay. But hey. <laughs> right. <laughs> The beachhead was set and the infantry came of uh, the beach and the link between Omaha and Utah was, uh, was there. Then prisoners were rounded up, lots of prisoners. The little village of Foucarville back then counted, you can see the houses over there, uh -huh. counted back then about 100 inhabitants, 120 maybe, about uh, 1,200 cows. And um, at the end of 44, uh, these fields were covered with prisoners of war. At, um, at, at the highest point, they had 40,000, 40,000. Wow, and these fields uh, are here. Prisoners. Huh? These Holy fields. Cow. It's incredible. Wow. And then all kinds of conventions ah. had to be respected. Yeah. So, prisoners of war, uh, a roof above their heads, three meals a day. Uh, some distractions like uh, like cinemas, uh -huh. like uh, hobby shops. They even had an orchestra, a philharmonic orchestra. And um, these prisoners stayed here till 1948. Wow. Hmm. So after the war ended in 1945, the prisoners were still kept here. It was here where they saw the first American movies in the cinemas. Walt Disney movies, um, Danny Kaye, uh, Rita Hayworth. Is that mm -hmm. uh, Yeah. So, um, uh, and in all these years, everything was bar barbed wired, but uh, in all these years, no reports of uh, escape attempts <laughs> was reported. <laughs> this was regular army, yeah. German army. They got fed up with the war. It was crisis in uh, Germany because everything was, uh, was, uh, was, uh, shoot, was shot to pieces. Mm -hmm. So they had... Not bad, uh, not bad of a life here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then in 19, uh, and then during this, uh, these uh, movies, um, the, the inhabitants of Foucarville, they never uh, saw a, a movie. So they asked the Americans if it was possible to, uh, to witness some movies in some cinemas as well. And then this was okay, this was allowed. Also the kids, 
for the kids, uh, they were too small for the for the for the chairs. Mm -hmm. But the Germans had their hobby shops. So even now there are some older people over there. They still have their stools uh -huh. because the Germans made them some little uh, three pot oh, stools. Is that right? Huh? And it's just next to their uh, chimney. Oh, okay. So um, wow. <laughs> and apart from that, the Germans were very fond uh, of sports. Uh -huh. So this camp of 40,000 uh, prisoners of war uh, counted back then two sporting grounds. Mm -hmm. And frankly, we are now on Stadium Road. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then you would think, okay, uh, how does this guy know this Stadium Road? Well, if you have a close look, you see what a little goat is? Yeah. There is a little height uh -huh. on the terrain. That is the curve of a running track. Okay. You see yeah. how it you see oh, yeah, how it goes right. around? Uh-huh. And in the middle there's the football pitch. Uh-huh. So we're standing at on the corner of uh, of a sporting ground on uh, Stadium Road. <laughs> houses you see the ocean mm -hmm. so you see that the terrain is going down for about 10 to 12 meters there's an observation post up there all these churches were used by uh, by the germans for observation uh -huh. but talking about uh, making a difference between omaha beach and utah beach the two defense lines mm -hmm. um, omaha you have the beach and the high dunes uh, straight behind the beach, hmm. but here is only beach, so that's first defense line. Yeah, and the first high ground is on this ridge. So this road we just came from has well about eight villages with all kinds of funny names like like Poupéville, like uh, uh, Foucarville, <laughs> like uh, Saint Martin de Varaville, Saint George, de Saint George de Varaville, uh, the, the Le Grand Chemin, etc., etc. And every village had a mobile German battery. Uh -huh. So this second defense line for the Allies was very hard to um, to um, to discover. Uh -huh. So the paratroopers who got in here first, it was the 101st, it had not only uh, the, the task to secure the exit roads mm -hmm. leading off the beach to the first ridge, mm -hmm. like, uh, like you can see on this map. Exit road one, uh, Poupéville. Exit two, exit three, Saint Martin de Varaville. Exit four, Saint Germain de Varaville, Foucarville. Then there was Ravenoville, and then there was Azeville saint -Marcouf. So these exit roads were secured, but this road, uh, the chance of uh, finding one of these eight mobile batteries, uh, that had to be done because they were a threat for the landing, be the, mm -hmm. the, the landing fleet. And um, Dick Winters and Easy Company landed here, assembled here. Well, their first task was to... Is that... Uh, was to um, was to uh, find out where these batteries were. Mm -hmm. So um, their first uh, objective was this uh, uh, Brecourt Manor battery, which was battery number two. Uh huh. And frankly, they were looking for number seven, but they were assigned to go to number two. Uh huh. Yeah. Target opportunity. Probably. Yeah, well, and <laughs> you know how they took it out. Yeah. Inevitable. <laughs> 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 
That is awesome. And that's the key. You just got up with that helping your wife. Of course I'm going to help you. Look at that. I'm a pure gentleman. Yes. <laughs> no, no. It's his responsibility. <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to sleep here actually. <laughs> Sorry, you definitely will. By the way, you see those um, those uh, metal uh, things with these holes in it? Uh huh. They were those were used for um, the temporary airstrips. Uh -huh. The ALGs, the so-called ALGs, the advanced landing grounds. You know how soft the ground is, mm -hmm. and um, uh, the uh, the Allies were not only uh, in need for artificial ports, but also for airstrips. Because if you have air superiority, mm -hmm. then you control well perhaps seventy percent of uh, of the of the grounds uh, down there. Mm -hmm. But after the war, um, nothing was taken uh, back to uh, to the states, mm -hmm. and Europe was completely wasted. So every material was more than welcome. Mm -hmm. So these were used for, for, for fencing. Uh -huh. um, why I stop here? Because um, around about three o'clock in the morning, there was a group of 60 paratroopers, mainly uh, Easy Company. Uh, there was a lost 82nd paratrooper with them. And they assembled here because they saw some light and they heard noise. And they send a little recce to that building over there. We go there in a minute, and well, there they heard uh, not 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 weaponry, but it was far more um, people preparing breakfast. There were uh, there were sounds of pots and, uh, and uh, spoons and uh, shouts in a language they couldn't understand. Well, that seemed to be. Oops, um, because there were lots of uh, Germans were housed in this vicinity uh -huh. for uh, working on Utah Beach or observing the countryside. So lots of German soldiers were here. Uh -huh. and that was um, the, the central kitchen uh -huh. uh, where they prepared the meals. So here, Easy Company prepared for uh, their first engagement. In getting this, um, getting these Germans out. Mm -hmm. So what happened was that they surrounded, and they managed to take this house, and then this house became like some sort of HQ. It was it was taken by the by Easy Company. They didn't know where they were exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, I show you in a minute that the officers were watching the maps uh, to see where they were. Yeah, they were studying uh, maps, yeah. and uh, the guys who, um, well, the, the the GIs who took uh, the building out, every, after everything was secured, they ate the German breakfast <laughs> because they hadn't been eating for uh, for, for quite a, quite some some time. Uh -huh. <laughs> and this is called um, the village of Ma uh, the, the the farmhouse of Marmion. Ma Marmion. Marmion Farm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you some pictures which you've seen, uh, which you might have seen in books. Yeah. But then uh, think about where these pictures have been taken. Well, I think we, we discovered the spot a couple of years ago. This place has been empty since 1956. Really, huh? Wow. Is this where the uh, that one soldier had the... They were told not to bring the, the, uh, the camera, but he was the only one that had the camera and took pictures here. Uh, I forgot his name. What he was Guff? Uh, Guff? Yeah, that's him. Yeah. These are the pictures. Oh, cool. This is, this is a place, huh? Awesome. Look at this. What a treat. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, like. Yeah, those are it. This guy? Yeah, that's it. Wow, it's amazing. Yeah. And that is where. Um, see that? There. That's the door. Uh huh. That's the window. That's the window on top. That's the window left. That's the window. Wow. That's see that? Yeah. And then. Um, the picture right there. 
Yeah, yeah. please, and I'll, I'll keep this video. Normally, the original picture is uh, the better, but what you can see, what you can see is this small part of that door. Mm -hmm. See that? You see here behind these guys, that little window. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the window over there and the door left to it is not. It's not on the picture anymore because. But, but this is this is the this is that spot. Wow. But normally the uh, the picture you you still find it's bigger and it's uh, more obvious. Mm -hmm. This one, two guys with the same flag. That one is taken underneath that, uh, so it's we have to move a bit. <laughs> that one is taken there. Yeah. So get the. They keep this house. Um, uh, it is episode two, uh -huh. where you see that um, all of a sudden I think it was malarkey, uh -huh. because there were 120 Germans here, and they took six prisoners. <laughs> so they got rid of the others. Yeah. In, in the in the firefight, 60 against 120. So they were outnumbered, but that's why you become a paratrooper. You're used to fight. Mm -hmm. 360 degrees, degrees around, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, Malarkey, they passed around these uh, six Germans and uh, someone was yelling something not nice. And now one of the, these six Germans replied in, in your language. Uh -huh. You remember that scene? Yeah, yeah. He was from uh, Seattle or Washington. The somewhere. same town yeah. as where this, I think it was Malarkey, Malarkey yeah. came from. Uh -huh. and, and, and even stronger, I think there were uh, four roads, yeah. four streets yeah. uh, behind each other. Uh -huh. And then, uh, well, he was starting to have a chat with this uh, German guy. Well, and that's when what, Spear run up and told him to get out of there. What you're wearing that yeah. uniform for? And then, uh, well, because his parents were German, he was brought up in the States, but then uh, before the war, they um, they wanted to visit relatives in Germany, then the war broke out, there was no chance for them to go back. And because he was uh, a native American, yeah. but his parents were German, so the Germans, um, they, um, they uh, summoned him to report in, um, in, uh, in, in the German army. Uh -huh. Then Spears came in. And he sent those men, uh, Malarkey and uh, the other ones, uh, sent them away. Yeah. And um, well, start to uh, to give some cigarettes and have a nice chat. And then all of a sudden, in Bama Brothers, you hear this machine gun. No prisoners. Yeah. Prisoners will slow you down. Uh huh. So that's the scene that was here in this area, oh. in this house. Wow. Uh -huh. There's so much history. Double glass. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's completely the original state. Mm -hmm. Talk about. Uh, after this battle, the, those uh, paratroopers, uh, they had some good food. Mm -hmm. And the officers in that barn, they were trying to uh, locate their position. Oh, okay.
Utah is completely different from Omaha. Kitchen bunkers, uh, soldiers off watch could have a good rest over there, ammunition bunkers. What is this called? It's a vehicle that's all This is called uh, the monument of uh, General Leclerc. General Leclerc, he landed here on uh, August 1st with his uh, 2nd French Armored Division. Oh, okay. Hundred and thirty six thousand men landed here. Two hundred and twenty thousand seven hundred and thirty five thousand tall. So this is exit road number two. Winner's Monument. Dedicated on June 6, 2012 by the World War II uh, Foundation along with our French allies from the Utah Beach Museum and with the support of the grateful citizens of the village of St. Marie du Mont in honor of Dick Winters and all of those American junior officers who led the way on D-Day, June 6, 1944. May we never forget their leadership under fire. We took exit row number two. This was his designated drop zone. The brown ones, you see the brown dots? Uh -huh. His uh, first, second, five or six. Uh, the first and uh, most of them they they were dropped in the vicinity of Poupeville, St. Mary du Mont and 
their drops on sea. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't, he was not too far off. Too far off. Uh huh. And this was, this was the location where um, they first ran into some uh, horse drawn carriages they had to take, uh, and, and they, they, they took them out uh -huh. before they were trying to find their HQ. Yeah. And finally found found their HQ. They were waiting for me and to uh -huh. report him. But he never showed up. And then reports came in all about this mobile battery number two at Breakour Manor. Uh -huh. So then as a new company commander, he got the assignment to yeah. uh, to take it out. And you know what happened? Yeah. We're going there now. All right. Yeah. Let's take a look.